delighted to have you on the program, Stephen. Um, I'm not sure if you've had much sleep after last <laughs> night. Um, do you know what? No, not, not too much. Um, we, we were back late last night. We travelled sort of straight after the game. And, you know, and then we got home sort of in, in the early hours of this morning. It was about half five, six o'clock or some of the boys that were home. So a few hours sleep and then sort of up and on it today. I've, I have two wee wains in the house. So <laughs> if anyone has wains, you know, you don't get much eye on there. But no, look, still, still buzzing and stuff from last night. You said in the build up of this game, miracles can happen. But did you really believe you were going to get one? Uh, it, in all honesty, you know, we, we weren't naive in understanding the sort of the size of the task that was that was facing us, you know. But there was always that sort of belief that, um, look, if we stay in the game for long periods, then then anything can happen. And we knew that we would get chances. And um, we knew that at some stage, along you know, throughout the ninety minutes or one hundred and twenty minutes, we would definitely get a chance or two. And you know, when you've got boys like Dean Lovac on the pitch who can who can put the ball in the back of the net, then you're always going to be in the game. You're always going to have a chance. And whenever I've actually done that interview with Damien, I was I was saying to him, you know, football is one of those sports that produces miracles year after year. You know, every year there's a, a some sort of a giant killing or some sort of a, you know shock result, and there was always going to be one last night in that Europa League. And and our sort of our sort of feeling was, why not us? Why can't it be us? It was incredible watching it, but you see social media. Obviously, you're going through your own set of emotions, being the captain, being on the pitch and processing all that. But it was like just watching so many people have a heart attack at once, really. The, the nerves were there. What was it like to be on the pitch and experience <laughs> that? It was great. Um, first and foremost, being on the pitch, it was great to be involved in that sort of, that sort of level of, of competition and that sort of standard of, of game. And... Um, being on the pitch, the word that I that keeps bringing me is just the intensity of it was just really sort of an intense 90 minutes or 120 minutes where your concentration levels, and, and to be fair, I thought the boys were, were brilliant at that. Their concentration levels had to be bang on the money for, for the whole period of the game. And I think you've seen any sort of lapse in concentration or any sort of misstep by a couple of yards here or there. And they were, you know, they were playing one twos and getting into the space. But, um, I just thought the boys managed the game, and I feel like we manage our emotions really well. You know, it's really easy to, to get caught up in in what the game is and and forget what your jobs are, what your roles are. Especially after they scored, you know, I think we scored and maybe for them a few minutes as opposed to you know we managed the game really well throughout the hundred and twenty minutes. But for those sort of couple of minutes after we scored, I think there was a bit of a bit of euphoria and a wee bit of keenness. They think we can we can go and do this. So and obviously we conceded again quickly after that. But once. Once we settled down again, I thought we we done really well, and and it was just it was just brilliant. And as you say, that sort of outpour of emotion, especially at the end, was just fantastic. You know, I think there's a good story floating about that not too many people know that um, our fuzzy couldn't make the journey, and Keller he, he couldn't make the journey, so um, they got a fuzzy from uh, the rugby club, uh, Kieran, and Kieran's first time meeting the boys, his first time sort of even being in the change room and, and seeing everyone. And, if you look back at the footage when the game finishes and Ben scores that one on penalty, Kieran's the first person down the top of him for the big huddle. It's it's brilliant. So there was a few jokes and it was it was good. So and it just sort of summed up the whole trip and and it's sense that Kieran was made to feel a part of it and just as much as anyone else and sort of allowed poor emotion from everyone. Just as you can see, it was brilliant. To a man, everyone played their part spectacularly. Mm-hmm. It probably needed that, didn't it? To get a result like that, you needed everyone to do their job and to do it above and beyond. But like, it's no secret to say James McLaughlin's a smashing player and he loves an important goal. That's it. I think, um, again, and all, I think I've done an interview last week, again, sort of speaking about James and how, you know, not a lot of people remember that James must have his cup final in 2018. James done his ACL and, you know, he's gone away and he's come back and I think lockdown was good for him. He's come back in great shape. He's come back probably as lean and as fit as he's ever been. And, you know, he scored... I was delighted for him personally that he scored the one in the League Cup final earlier in the year and he's come back he scored a big goal last week and a big goal last night and James is just a, a finisher he's just pure a pure goal scorer who can score different types of goals and, and you know even last week I think before before Skinner came on last week I think Orr might have been thinking between Curtis and, and James could he have made the sub either way and either one of them could pop up with a goal at any time and you know thankfully James did and last night again he's a man for a big occasions where if he gets a chance, you know he's probably going to hit the target and or find the bottom corner as he did. But as you say, the man, I think 
it needed that. It needed 11, 12, 13, 14 players. They come on and, and be on the pitch and be right on the money. I think for last night, it was one of those nights where everyone was just bang on the money. And I think a lot of credit has to go to Oren as well in the sense that, you know, we've gone away there against a, a, Euro, a you know, a side with good European pedigree in the sense that they play Champions League, they play Europa League group stages we, you know, year in, year out. So, Oren had a, a real good game plan and, and there was no grey areas for us, you know, and I think that helps when you're going into games like that where there was no, do I mark him or does he mark him? Should I go here? Should I go there? Everything was black and white on the money. We This is your job. This is the zones where you press. This is the zones where you track your runners. This is the zones where you let them have the ball and stuff like that. And it was it was just fantastic. And, and you know, credit to the boys, I think, genuinely, like I couldn't be prouder. And, you know, as a captain, I couldn't be prouder of the boys and the shift they put on. They were, they were outstanding. I think that's the thing you can't underestimate as well. You know, supporters maybe don't see that. The level of detail and planning and preparation that goes into those matches. And I know from speaking to various teammates of yours, Oren leaves no stone unturned. Oh, 100%. And, you know, that's something that probably anyone outside of football will find it a bit difficult to appreciate in the sense that the detail that, that Oren was able to go on in our sort of pre-match analysis and our preparations was was different class and you know the research that he had done and and you know we, there's someone that he works with they, they they research and find details on the teams that were playing and analyze their, their performances and what they like to do and what they don't like to do was was bang on the money right down the right down the information about which center half was maybe more comfortable on the ball or, or tricks that they tended to do was absolutely bang on the money and it, it gave us a clear picture of what we were going on there and what they expect. Um, you know, and sometimes you get there and, and that doesn't happen. You know, I think I, I had a bit of a joke with him about we, we had gone to Haggison a few years ago and sort of maybe our analysis wasn't, you know, wasn't bang on the money and we got a bit of information that maybe wasn't, wasn't spot on and we were maybe a bit surprised when we got on the pitch. But last night it was absolutely top jaw. There was no stone left unturned. We knew, you know, I think we knew what they would do set pieces defensively. We knew where they liked the attack. We knew, you know, which areas different types of players were going to try and play. And it, it was fantastic for us. They, they have that insight and that understanding of what we were going on there. And, you know, I think that gave us a platform. They really go on and perform well. And I think the boys carried out the plan. They an absolute T. It was, it was fantastic. It always amazes me where you can find energy from in your body. Because I'm sure after 90 minutes, all of you were thinking, Oh God! <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I think I think um, after after about eighty minutes or so, I think when we seen Skinner coming on, I think one of the boys should have thank God he's going for it, so we don't have to do extra time. <laughs> you know, and amidst that, and amidst that sort of chaos or that intensity of of the game, it was good. There was a few wee funny moments that that I don't know how you boys find the the time they relax and and find about a about a crack in the middle at all, but they did. You know. Our trainers reading David Goggins at the minute, and he's come off injured, and he's lying on the ground, and we're shouting forty percent at him. We're shouting, "You're only at forty percent. Let's go!" <laughs> so stuff like that was was good. But as you say, you just you just find the energy from each other. I think more than anything. I think you know, for me, I know looking at Stevie Lurie in front of me. Stevie Lurie's thirty three, and he's running around there like a twenty three year old. I think he was was I thought, I thought he was unbelievable last night. Mm-hmm. You know, and and that really drives you on. You know, when you see like. Stuart Nixon's playing in his first European game. You know, he's come from Carrick uh, and Ballyclare in the last couple of years, and we have stories like that all over the pitch. But he's come in and he's put in a real mature performance where at times he got us, especially in the first half, I thought, he took us 40, 50 yards up the pitch and won a free kick, took us 20, 30 yards up the pitch and won a throw one. And, you know, for people watching, it, it might be hard to understand, but that, that, 30 seconds of respite of being able to relax and reset and go again was, is, is them small gains is, is how we won the game you know that's how we managed the game and won it and the game particularly for Stuart and you know Stevie I thought they were they were both brilliant and Lyndon as well I mean you know obviously with his injury history you'd never have thought it he, he looked right at home at that level didn't he I think it was an extra time he was overlapping midfielders in, <laughs> in the middle of the park and I'm sort of watching that going <laughs> well, how is he doing this? Hundred percent, and I think London again, like James London, missed that twenty eighteen cup final. He had an absolute tour time with injury, Um, you know he broke his foot, and and, and it happened again. You know a, a couple of a couple of eighteen months or so of, of really awful injuries, and 
Um, for us, we're just all so proud of him. And as you say, he looked right at home at that level. And where he found that energy from an extra time, they sort of do that overlap. I think me and Snowy were looking at him. I think we were tired looking at him. <laughs> no, he, he was overlapping. I was shooting this, Snowy, you better get him back. You better get him back here as soon as you can. Like, But he was brilliant. Um, and I think even... You know, it, was, it wasn't actually until after the game. I seen Philly Lowry had a tweet, and I, I thought it was bang on the money. Whenever, whenever Trinner gives away the penalty, if London doesn't clear the ball off the line, the referee plays advantage, and it's a goal. You know, when I, and, and he's, he's cleared the ball off the line, and he must have pushed about it that much, by the way, but he's cleared the ball off the line. The referee doesn't play advantage, gives a penalty, and he misses it. And, you know, it's one of those things that that sort of summed up our night, that, that it was our night, and, and it's, it's one of the things that we were... We had spoke about on the breaks of, uh, you know, we had spoke about in the breaks that this was our night and we had to believe that this was going to be our night and this was our chance to go and make history and, you know, we had, we had a choice to make, I think, in, in extra time. Do we sit on here and, and hope that Marabor don't score again or do we try and, you know, stick to the game plan, work through the thirds and try and get something to get us up a pitch and, and do well and go and make history? And I thought the boys done it right down the tee and, just finally on London again, London's got, you know, uh, bags of ability, but he's got bags of heart and bags of, you know, he's got loads of reasons to, to be inspired and be motivated. And his dad, Kenny, for if he sees it, Kenny, we were all thinking about you last night, you know, had been on well and been in hospital. And, you know, for him to take that sort of inspiration and drive and they go on and perform like that last night, I thought he was, I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, get well soon. Fantastic uh, point to make as well there, Stevie. Um, when they hit the crossbar with the penalty, is that the moment you go right? It has to be our night now. I think, I think at that stage when when you're thinking when the penalty's given away, you, you, you sort of that emotion, your your heart sinks and you're thinking, here we go, like this this is us, we're done here. And when he hits the bar, as you say that that's when it just clicks that this is our night. You know, when I think from that point on, there was that real sort of steadiness about us that they aren't going to score again. They will not score. If we get another chance, we might score, but they are not going to score tonight. Um, they're not going to score again. And, and that was something that we kept going back to. Um, as I say, in those wee money breaks and play and those wee opportunities where you get your breather and half time and extra time that we aren't going to lose tonight. We're going to go and we're going to get a result here. And, and that belief was genuine from that point on. And I think... Or made a great point from the us. Um, when the game started, they were... They were overwhelming favourites. I think someone was saying we had we had been 15, 16, 18, they won, they won the game. And as the game went on, that them odds start going down and down and down. And even in half time, one was saying, if we get the 60 minutes here and it's nil nil, then this is what we've come for. And this is what we've come here for. We have a proper rattle at them for half an hour on even terms, on a on a, an even playing field. It goes from being that 18 to 1 or that 1 to 10 shot to being two teams half an hour they play on a level playing field and, and I thought it was bang on the money and again his, his insight and his set up and his preparation was just absolutely bang on the money and you know as the game wore on I felt we, we grew, grew more in our belief that this was going to be our night And it says a lot about the character of your teammates as well I'm thinking Owen Bradley and also Ben Doherty you know to step up and to bury their penalties a month on from the heartbreak of the Irish Cup semi-final against Balamina to do that away in Europe and the score and, and to be, you know, game changers, magic stuff. It is, it is. And I think character is probably a big word that, that describes our change room. You know, we've got, you know, I mentioned it before, we have players who a few years ago were playing in the Saturday morning leagues. We have boys who a few years ago were playing in relegation scraps in the championship. We have players who never played in the Irish Premiership until the last year or so. We had players last night making their debut in Europe and you know that sums us up as a group that we're sort of a bag of all sorts <laughs> that are sort of through together and it's just it's just absolutely perfect the sort of the mix that we've got. And for them boys especially, um I think it was it was it was brilliant. You know, they come on for Skinner and for Ben they played hundred and twenty minutes. I thought he was outstanding well. He was dead in his feet. But they have that sort of mentality that I must have penalty last month, but I don't care. I'll go and score. I'll go and score either one or the night. I'll go and be our main man. I'll step up when when you need us. And you know, we joke with Skinner. I think he, I think he needed broke his toe. He kicked the ground before he kicked the ball, but it doesn't matter. He scored, and I think a wee bit of credit as well has to go to um, Parky and, and Big G. You know, Big G had been out injured for a long time. He came on last night. Then 
in extra time. And I thought he'd done really well in front of us and, and Parky as well. And you know, Parky's gone from not starting the game, they coming on doing well. We can only set the first penalty, still the top ends, and that just set the tone for us. You know, I think if you miss that first penalty, you're under a wee bit of pressure, or you may be thinking, "Oh no, here we go again." But Parky just settled in there, scored the first one. You no, know, and we were on the way and. We always felt that that they knew would maybe get close to one, or or he might save one because obviously he's, he's a good keeper. And thankfully, the number ten, who I thought was a top top player, had the post, and it just shows you the penalty shooter. If you can get there, it's just it's one of those things. It just you don't know which way it's going to go. I'm glad you mentioned him because Gareth Dean. I mean, he's only been with the squad for a very short amount of time to come yeah. into a game like that. He's made some ridiculously good saves as well. 100%. He did. I think that one in extra, I think it was extra time where it's bounced and your man's had a half volley and it's going yeah. in the top corner and he's just plucked it out of the air. I thought it was, again, that's another one of those moments where when stuff like that happens, you're feeling this is our night. You know, they aren't going to score again. You know, the goal itself, we're disappointed in the goal, especially conceding just after we scored. But I thought you have done really well. And, you know, he's come in, he's only been in a couple of weeks. And, but again, it's just speaking, our change room's brilliant. We're, you know, we're really welcoming the new players and we really try and go out there and make sure that new players feel part of the group. And, you know, I think Orn, oh, Orn's caught him there. He, he's made him room with our trainer. So I think his ear was chewed off him for the last couple of days. But, um, you know, it, it seems as though he's followed on really well and he's enjoying it. And, um, you know, it's great. It's great for him as well. You know, it's, it's not easy coming from from Lumfield and not playing a lot of games. They've sort of been thrown in the deep end there and playing two games in Europe in a week. And, you know, credit to him, he's, he's been outstanding since he came again. And last night, I thought he was really, really clever, you know. And, and, and you know, he had all the old tricks out. He was he was swapping sideways, goal kicks. He was walking after the ball and, and, and getting the ball that had been used during the game instead of doing the multi-ball system and getting the ball behind the net. And, you know, it's wee things like that that people might not have noticed that... that got us them small gains, that got us that 30 seconds respite, that got us... You know the extra bit of breather that we needed when we were under pressure, and you know it was a really mature performance from Gareth and 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 all the boys. To be fair, and they they were just them small things that I thought really really helped us and was really sort of impressive in, in how we managed the game. And now all eyes on the draw. I mean, there's some big teams you could potentially come up against. Maybe even a trip to the San Siro. Do you know what? It was after the game. There was just that sort of euphoria of 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 getting through, and it was only after about 20 minutes. I think someone said. Hey, we could play AC Milan, you know, or we could play Spurs, or we could, you know, and then, then you start dreaming, then, you know, then you start chatting, and you start thinking, like, where could this go from here? Who could you get, you know? And, and I think everybody was sort of under the same, on the same boat that in this next round, you're just hoping for someone big, you're hoping for someone, someone that could really sort of be a glamour tie that you sort of might not get again. And, um, you know, looking at the, the last of the city teams, as I say, Spurs are on there, uh, AC Milan were on there, and then I seen sort of Rosenberg were on there, Malmo were on there, you know, some some top Galatasaray and stuff were on there, some top European sides. So um, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be regionalised again. I don't know if you know better than me, but yeah. um, if it was regionalised, does that narrow it down to sort of the Northern European teams, the English and the Scottish teams? Um does, I think it not. does to an extent um, because there's a good chance that you could end up against a Rangers or an Aberdeen. But even, uh, even that, of course, would be fantastic. But course, um, yeah. I think the club's going to get a, a list of that in the coming days and you're going to probably yeah. know by about Monday who you can definitely... Uh, that's what they were saying there. Monday's probably going to be the date. But between now and Monday, you know, we'll have a dream. I think uh, Skinner was saying on the plane there last night, uh, if we get AC Milan, he'd be tweeting Ibrahimovic. They tell him he's wearing Skinner pajamas and all the way, <laughs> stuff like that. So, you know, he's running around shouting, Ibrahimovic already knows who I am. He already knows who Skinner is and stuff. So, stuff like that. Something like that would be would be out of this world. You know, if you could get an AC Milan away or a Spurs away, it would just be out of this world. And, you know, it would be a fine reward for, for all the hard work that's going on. You know, and, and last night, I think um, people were probably under the assumption that we prepared for that game for, for a couple of days or a week's preparation. But it actually was. And that's a culmination of a year's sort of work. You know, that's a culmination of Owen coming back last season, you know, of setting teams up week in, week out, training week in, week out, getting players. They understand how you want them to play. The new players that have come in and, you know, getting them to jail as a group and having that real mentality over the last year that, we are one sort of squad. We are one group. There's no individuals. There's no 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 sort of big egos or personalities that are too big for the group. We are one group that works in the same direction, you know, and that follows the manager's instructions down to an absolute T. You know, I think, 
you know, huge credit must go to Oren like, and, and I can't praise him enough for, for how well he, he set us up and, and how brilliant he is as I'll say manager and stuff. And and as I say, it's that's that's a year sort of work put together there and that performance, you know, that performance didn't come about, you know, just off of one that performance came about for players understanding each other and being able to work together and work on a system and you know, especially in just a wee example, like London and Josh down that right side are playing together for the guts of eighteen months or two years sort of bar injuries and their understanding of when they press and who goes to the runner and who goes to the thrower and what is second they none and it's stuff like that that gets you through on nights like last night as opposed to you know 11 players just sort of doing their own thing so uh, as I say a year's work sort of came together and that's just a, a brilliant reward for it. I mean the way you're talking I, I could see you being a coach someday Stevie it sounds like you've got a wee managerial <laughs> head on you. Well, we'll see, we'll see. I think I'm going to try and um, get booked in to do these badges next summer. And a few of our boys have done them already. I think Stevie was doing his there recently. And um, it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm 28 now on Tuesday, so I'm still a few years on my But if I can get the get the badges done early, maybe maybe it's something we'll look at down the line. But it's something that I'm really interested in. I know, you know I, love, I love that sort of side of it and understanding and look, try and speak to you Owen about what he's thinking and, and how we're setting up and maybe why um why we do certain things in certain situations and you know for me it's just about trying to especially going out on the pitch and sort of being the captain and having they having they sort of give information regularly it's good for me to know what he's thinking as well so the information i'm giving the players isn't the complete opposite of what he's trying to say you know sometimes yeah. sometimes we'll be training and, and the game might be all about pressing intensity and some of our boys might be sitting off um and it's good that they, they hear that on from him, they stop and say, no, I want you to press here, I want you to do this. And that's what I thought the game was, was brilliant about last night, that, again, there was no grey areas. We had a, a clear plan and which areas of the pitch we would be aggressive on and which areas in the pitch we would maybe be a bit more passive on and you know where we wanted them to play and where we didn't want them to play. And you know I thought I thought we'd done that particularly well. And, and I think, again, just on that, I think a huge amount of credit has to go to some of the younger players. You know, Aaron Jarvis is... You know, he strolls about there as if he's 30 years of age, but he's only a young player, you know, and Ben Doherty's still only a young player, and Stuart Nixon's only a young player. London, for all his experience and all his games, is still only a young player, you know. And for young players, they go out and put on that performance that they did last night, and the real maturity they showed, and the discipline they showed, I thought was, was brilliant again, and it's something that, I don't know, I don't know if, if you can really appreciate it now at the minute, you know, I think Doogie, Doogie Stephen Douglas said something brilliant there to me, he said, for the amount of ties and the amount of victories they had at Lumfield, it's only now that he's at his age where he can sit back and say, like, that was something special or that was something fantastic. You know, it has encouragement to us as they sort of soak it in and enjoy it. And there was no beer and stuff last night. There was no, we were sort of straight on the plane and straight home. So I think we're going to try and get something sorted now for the morning where we can go and enjoy each other's company and, and have a bit of crack down, down in Korea and down at the social club, maybe. Um, hopefully, anyway, and get on the chairman here so we can get it sorted. And, um, <laughs> Hi, um, and I'm sure he won't mind, so that we can we can really soak it and enjoy for the rest of the weekend, and then come Tuesday, then we're we're sort of back at work to get ready for dreaming of who we could get next. Oh, it's an incredible time! You've definitely earned that social setting celebration, call it whatever you want. Now, most certainly, I mean that was above and beyond what anybody expected. You have done fantastically well, and just hearing you talk there about management ambitions, I'm thinking in ten years here we'll be looking back at this interview and going, ah, oh, you remember. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, fantastic talking to you. And I tell you what, it's just made all of us excited for when the league eventually comes back again, seeing the quality 100%. and the excitement that it can bring. 100%. And I think last night again is probably, um, you know, a, a reflection on how well the Irish League's doing at the minute. You know, I think there's been a lot of talk about over the last 18 months. Obviously, Lumfield have done, a, done something fantastic last season. You know, and again, they're still sort of. They're still in Europe, obviously. They they could still go and do something brilliant this season. And I think for the league, um, you know, we've got four European places coming back next season. And it's really important that we that we've done well these last two games and that everyone that goes into Europe does well because it's important. It's big money for the league. It's important for clubs and it's important to keep the league competitive that there's you know, clubs doing well in Europe and, and you know, getting money in the door and getting money into the league and, and the league's in a good place at the moment. I think it's a really exciting time to, to be involved in the Irish League where, you know, probably you're going on the next season, you're probably thinking anyone in the top six will probably be looking to win this league. Do you know what I mean? So, um, 
it's going to be great. It's going to be really exciting to get back. And you know, I think for us again, that's probably another wee reward for last night. As and um, we get to keep going here now. As much as a wee break would have been nice for a week or two, um, they'd be able to keep training for the next couple of weeks and sort of keep topping up their fitness levels. You know, you get that game three weeks from yesterday. Uh, and then before you know the league starts then, so you're hoping that you're going to hit the ground running in the league and you're going to be as fit as you've ever been for the start of the league season. Oh, exciting times. You've built it up perfectly. Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. coming on today and well done to oh, you and all your teammates for yesterday. That was a, a magnificent result. Oh, man, Michael, thanks very much.